Okay, we're live guys. Wave to the camera, I guess. <laughs> hey everyone, we're live with the social roundup with Emma Rose. I have quite a few guests with me here via Zoom. Uh, let's actually press record because I need to show this to other people later. Um, so I have with me quite a few guests. Um, you guys are all part of the Erie Playhouse. You guys worked with the Erie Playhouse for quite a few years. Um, so let's just have you guys introduce yourselves, starting with Katie. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Conti. Um, I have been involved with the Erie Playhouse since I was about five years old and went to youth theater camp, did lots of shows, uh, both youth theater and main stage, and concerts and community engagement too. So really happy to be home in Erie during this quarantine and reconnecting with old friends. Emily, do you wanna go next? Sure. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Emily Torek. Um, I first started uh, being involved with the Playhouse when I was 12 years old. Uh, my first show was Camp Rock, a uh, whole bunch of fun. Um, I haven't done a Playhouse show in the last couple of years since I've been up in New York uh, being at college and I wish I could be home uh, in Erie right now being with friends, but I'm up here in Rochester, but really happy to be involved with this. Lydia, do you want to go next? I'm Lydia Lent. Um, I first started doing youth theater shows at the Erie Playhouse in 2010. Um, and then once I graduated the youth theater program, I had the opportunity to work with the youth theater camps, which was super awesome. Loved being a part of that. And then I also got the chance to direct two uh, summer series shows for the youth theater, which was amazing. And Luke, our sole male <laughs> interviewee here today. Um, hi, my name is Luke Wyand, and I started doing stuff at the Playhouse in eighth grade, doing uh, uh, quite a few theater things, and I was fortunate enough to do um, a few main stage productions as well, and most recently I did Spring Awakening back in July. July? It was July. <laughs> and Leah. Hi, uh, I'm Leah Matthew. I've been doing shows at the Playhouse since I was about nine, and then... Since then, I've taught some classes. I've worked at camp, uh, assistant directed a little. Tried, I, I don't know, tried to do anything that they let me do. <laughs> um, and hi guys, I'm. I actually have been involved with the Playhouse since 2011. I want to say, um, where Lydia and I were actually in a summer series production of The Little Mermaid together. Um, and then I was able to do um, some other youth theater things together. I was able to do Shrek, um, some concert things. Um, and actually, Kate, the um, executive director of the Playhouse, introduced me to my best friend in college. So, Kate is a, a great friend of mine, and um, these people I've known for a long time, especially Luke. Luke and I went to grade school together. You were one of my first friends um, in grade school. Um, so, we're talking about the 16 bar challenge today. Um, since everything is going crazy right now, um, with COVID-19 and things are shutting down. And right now we actually really need the arts um, to get us through this and artists. Um, so you guys have created this incredible, incredible fundraiser um, called the 16 Bar Challenge that has included a lot of um, Erie Playhouse current players, um, alumni, um, and so forth. So how did you guys come up with this and when did you guys come up with this? Well, um... My friend Ian Brady, who can't be here right now, uh, he and I were talking as soon as we heard that the Playhouse unfortunately had to close and temporarily lay off all their staff. And we're kind of like, okay, well, what are we going to do? It wasn't a question of really if, um, because, you know, the Playhouse has always been there for us as this wonderful, safe place. And we want to make sure that that continues for a long, long time. Uh, and it was Ian who came up with the idea that maybe people would like to sing the first 16 bars of their first audition song as a fun way to reminisce, but also support the Playhouse, you know, while they're struggling right now. And so um, what is the premises of the 16 bar challenge? I know you sing the first 16 bars of your first audition song, um, but how do you raise money with that? So what we've been doing is um, having people First off, when you're tagged by someone else, or if you're not tagged, if you'd like to just join along anyways, um, make a video and think about the first time you did an audition, perhaps at Erie Playhouse, perhaps somewhere else, um, or if it wasn't an audition, um, you know, some other way of getting involved, um, make yourself a video. Put a post on Facebook 
um, and then share it around. Um, include a couple of hashtags that we have. Um, hashtag your playhouse, hashtag give them love, um, 16 going on quarantine. That was a good one. I don't know who came up with that, but that was, that was a good one. Emily. Good job, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then uh, think about a few people who you have not seen do a video yet uh, and tag them and encourage them to join. Um, we found that it's been really helpful for everyone to be super supportive of each other's videos. And I definitely know after I tagged a couple of people who in my head were always the big kids that perhaps haven't done a show um, at the Playhouse in a while because they're full-fledged adults and out of eerie they're getting involved too. And it's cool to get to engage and think of people who are not always the first people in your mind when you think of Erie Playhouse. Getting people re-engaged is kind of the, the name of the game here. And it's been awesome to see you know, the current kids, people from when I was you know seven years old doing youth theater shows. And then of course, our awesome orchestra and crew members too doing their own spin on things. It's pretty, it's pretty fantastic. And with every video that's posted, um, we ask people to include the GoFundMe link. And so the idea is that you can donate just a little bit when you post the video. If you can't donate, then still sharing your video with the donation link will then spread the word. So we even have a lot of youth theater kids who are posting. And although you know they might not be able to donate, we get a lot of their parents, people who are seeing their videos and being like, oh, this is so awesome. I want to donate. I want to give for this. And um, we'll actually be linking that GoFundMe um, in the comments to this um, once we end this live stream and then later today. Um, so you guys can donate to the Erie Playhouse. Um, so why is it super important that we give back to the Erie Playhouse right now? So the Erie Playhouse, obviously during the pandemic, live entertainment, live theater is not considered an essential business during this time of global crisis. But in everyday life for a lot of people, the Erie Playhouse is an essential business. For the Erie community, the Erie Playhouse is an essential business. We help the entire community with so many different things. We especially have a lot of youth outreach programs. We partner with Sarah Reed, with the Boys and Girls Club. We have the Playtime Series. We have youth theater shows and camps that are really integral to the development of our youth in the Erie community. And everyone you see here today is, you know, a successful story from the youth theater program. And so just giving back so that we make sure that when this pandemic is over, we still have the Erie Playhouse as our essential business, that they can open their doors as soon as possible. Because when this is all over, we're all going to need a lot of healing. We're all going to need to be cheered up. And the Erie Playhouse is just about the best business to do that. So um, I keep seeing on Facebook and all of all over social media that, um, you know, it's the artists that we turn to right now, um, whether they're singers, they're actors, they're books. Um, those are the people that we're turning to now to help get us through this. Um, so, you know, all of us right here are artists. Um, so we're performing right now. Um, we're performing whether we're singing, we're doing shows like this for you guys. Um, and so the Erie Playhouse is an art form that we need to have in our community because it goes so much further than just, you know, the shows that they put on. They do so much more, um, like you said, Lydia. Um, so like, what are some of the songs that people have been able to perform? I know you guys have talked about, it's like the first 16 bars of the first audition songs. I know like some people may not remember what their first audition songs are, um, but what are some songs that like people have been performing? Yeah, it's just really been a delight to see a lot of um, what are the song like a lot of the songs that people have been doing because some range from uh, a song from the musical Annie and then some go to the Star Spangled Banner and even uh, Kate, the executive director, did Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and it's just it's just so wonderful to see like the various songs like from all across the like from all across and to and it's also really special too in the beginning of some videos when they say. This is, I sang this song for my first audition and the show was this, and this is the song that I did. And yeah, it's just really special when they put that little cherry on the top. <laughs> so um, can I just ask you guys to tell me what your audition songs were and what your first shows were? Well, so I, I oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. 
my first audition song was um, The Joy of Motherhood from Honk, which I don't know why I was singing about being a mother when I was 10 years old, um, but I was auditioning to be in Cinderella where Katie actually um, played Cinderella. Um, and so it was really cool to just think back to that audition and think about how different, you know, my audition skills were when I were 10, when I was 10 until where they are now. Yeah. Wow, that's a great pick, Lydia. Uh, love Good Honk Jr. I was in that one too when I was little. Um, my first audition song was when I was five, and I was auditioning for Annie, and I sang You're Never Fully Dressed Without a Smile. Needless to say, I was playing with my braids during my audition, and the wonderful David Matthews yelled at me because I couldn't focus. And so my first audition, I did not make it into the show, but a couple years later when I was, you know, a little less nervous, um, I still was singing You're Never Fully Dressed Without a Smile. Probably I was a little too old, but you know what? You can't go wrong with Annie. <laughs> Never, yeah. <laughs> Uh, my first audition song was a song called A Cockeyed Optimist from South Pacific. Um, before that, it was actually a, a very bad rendition of Munchkin Land from uh, The Wizard of Oz. Um, but for my Eerie Playhouse audition, I did A Cockeyed Optimist for Camp Rock and started with the lovely Katie Conti, actually, and almost hit her in the head with a flying shoe during a show one night. <laughs> but it was a great first experience. My first Playhouse audition was uh, for Mulan Jr. and I sang The Bare Necessities. That's it. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> they let me in anyway. I'm very thankful. So I don't actually remember my first audition song. So Emma, you and I were both in Willy Wonka Jr. at Westlake Middle School and so that was <laughs> officially my first show ever but my first playhouse audition song now mind you i wasn't very artistically inclined at first i was still getting the hang of what theater was so i sang yesterday by the beatles oh my gosh i i can see you singing that like perfectly um i don't remember what my first audition song was um i think it was actually for Little Mermaid, we didn't actually have an audition song. Um, I didn't have to that. Yeah, no. Um, so I think it was for Shrek that we had an audition song for. Um, I don't remember what I used. I have no idea. Um, I think it was People from Funny Girl. And I have no idea why I used that song for Shrek. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I did, I think. But yeah, Luke and I did shows at Westlake Middle School. Um, my mom actually directed the show, so sh shout out to you, mom. Um, Luke, you were Willy Wonka, you were fabulous, and I played Mike TV um, <laughs> back when, when I looked like a boy. <laughs> so, uh, gender bending in theater. <laughs> yeah, gender bend. Yeah. Um, and that's something that the Playhouse does. The Playhouse lets you um, do a lot of different things. They allow you to explore different characters, different parts of your personality. Um, so how can people, you know, help the arts right now, not just the Erie Playhouse, but the arts in general right now, since we all, we're all stuck at home, we don't really know what to do with ourselves, but how can people um, help the arts in general, and especially the Erie Playhouse? So of course, yeah, this is an incredibly tough time for arts organizations all over the country, and especially ones like ours that are, you know, theater-based or music-based, anything that really involves, you know, gathering together and being in a community with people while you're, you know, experiencing art being made right in front of you. Um, and that's a really hard thing to kind of deal with during uh, quarantine right now. So I think the most important thing uh, while we're in quarantine, while we're, you know, stuck at home and not being able to really experience this with every, ever, uh, other people, sorry, um, is really just to be a patron and be a um, supporter of the arts if you can. If you have the means to, donations are the best way to go. Um, the Area Playhouse, of course, uh, recently had to lay off pretty much all of, all of its staff. 
um, unfortunately because of uh, kind of the financial strains that are happening. Um, the hope is that we'll be able to bring them back very, very soon, but you know, this is happening all over the country. Uh, a lot of nonprofit theater companies offer, uh, operate on very, very small margins and they rely on you know their communities and shows to really carry them through from season to season. And so um, I've, what I've been seeing going around a lot, uh, especially in uh, other theater-based arts organizations is if you had a ticket already to any sort of live event, consider donating the price of that ticket back to the organization rather than you know, trying to get a refund for them. Um, and if you have a little bit of money to spare right now, so you're like, you know, I'm gonna go out to a movie every week or something, but I can't really do that. Consider turning that back into you know, a donation to support the arts and, really when we are able to open back up and you know be in community with others again and experience the arts together to just be a vocal supporter of it like go be there you know bring friends you know reintroduce them and introduce them for the first time to you know this thing that means so much to all of us because that's really what's going to get us through and what's going to carry us into this you know new age post uh, covid-19 you know um, is reengaging people who may have lost touch and introducing new people and showing them why we why we love this so much and so oh oops. go ahead go ahead katie i was gonna say and don't forget if you have young kids at home perhaps who might be you know starting to get into the age where they're learning to read or um they might want to you know perhaps join a youth theater camp or audition for a playhouse show in the future as we hope they will definitely consider, you know, showing them the movie Annie. Consider putting on a soundtrack and having a dance party, doing, listening to a book on tape and acting out the words that they're reading along to. These are all lessons that we do in our playtime program at the, you know, at the Playhouse. But I would say people of all ages, you know, anything that will help build that confidence, that will help you learn how to tell a story, because those kinds of activities, whether you're on stage or you're in your living room, can help build empathy. They can help you build quick thinking and critical thinking skills. They can help you just be a better leader and a better person, and hopefully a strong performer the next time you're able to audition for a playhouse. Um, There's so much content out there right now. It's absolutely insane. Like, um, any sort of arts organization right now is trying to do as much as they can digitally and just provide you know, some sort of entertainment uh, while we're uh, stuck at home. And so, yeah, as Katie said, like introducing kids to that and showing them all the great stuff that's out there. Um, the National Theatre in London is, for instance, doing a free live stream every single week um, of some of the shows that they've done over the years. They just did a One Man, Two Governors uh, with James Corden, and that was streaming free. Um, Broadway HD is another great resource. They have like full Broadway shows. You can get a free trial for a week and binge watch all the Broadway shows that you want. You know, this is a great time to, you know, dive into things you haven't really seen before so that when we can experience theater together, um, we can do it, you know, more excited than ever. And Drama Shop is uh, streaming Silent Sky uh, pretty soon for, uh, it's a pay what you can. So if you want to do that same kind of experience, but also support a local theater, that's a great thing to do too. Awesome. Is there anything else that you guys want to add um, about the Playhouse, about this challenge? Is can So anyone can join in this challenge, right? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. had people be really creative. Um, our pit members have gotten involved, some of them some of them singing and showing us that they have a banging voice on top of everything else, and some of them playing instruments. Uh, some of the crew members were listing 16 things they have to have when they're on crew. I mean, this is not just for performers at the Playhouse. We value I, all the volunteers, all the workers for their unique gifts. It's not just about the singing. Yeah, it's not, the Playhouse is not just its performers. It, it's its crew, it's its orchestra, it's its volunteers, it's its staff, it's it's everyone. It's family. a family, family, and it yeah, it's, it's the audience very together. Yes, yeah, audience, absolutely. Oh yeah. So maybe the audience could say like 16 shows that they have loved seeing at the Erie Playhouse. I mean, mm -hmm. I can say 16 shows I've loved seeing at the Erie Playhouse, like hands down. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so there are definitely plenty of ways that people can get involved. Um, and like I said, um, I will be linking down the GoFundMe. So if you want to give and you can give, please do give because this place has meant so much, not only to me, but to 
the Erie community, there is not one person in the Erie community that the Erie Playhouse has not touched. Um, so if you can give, please give. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank um, you so much, Emma. It was really great seeing you guys too. Um, these guys are amazing. Um, I genuinely love them. They're so fun to hang out with. Um, and we need to all catch up soon. So yeah, we do. Yeah. And you know what, Emma? There's one thing that we always say before most shows at the Erie Playhouse. Um, we say, "Give them love," and then and everyone then, else replies, "And then give, give it back." back. back. Mm -hmm. So we really help that whether you're able to contribute or not to the Erie Playhouse, that you can give them love, give your performers love, give your families love, give the future performers love, and they'll give it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It truly is a family, and you guys are part of that family. So thank you guys. I will talk to you all soon. So keep up this challenge. You guys keep up this challenge, and the Erie Playhouse will be bigger and better than ever. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. Awesome. So that was um, such a great um, conversation. I haven't seen a lot of these people in so long. Um, so, like I said, I've you know performed with so many of these kids. Kids, we're all adults now, <laughs> and um, a lot of the Erie Playhouse is a family. Actually, all of it is a family. Um, so if you can give, please give. I will be linking it down below. Um, and that's pretty much all we have for today. Um, if you have anything that's good going on in your life, please send it to me at news at wjettv.com. There's two T's. Um, we're all about sharing good news here at the social roundup with Emma Rose. That is what we are all about. Um, if you have a 16 bar challenge video that you want to be shared, you want to have shared, uh, send it to me and we will share it with everyone here. Um, if you have anything else that you want shared, like I said, send it to news at wjettv.com and just put social roundup with Emma Rose or just social roundup in the header and we'll share it. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday. We will see you guys tomorrow on Instagram on the Your Eerie Jet TV Fox 66. That's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> Instagram at 2 p.m. And we'll be talking about what you can do this weekend for fun. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye.